In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, you are welcome to this brief moment of reflection on the, on the Word of God for the 25th Sunday of the year A. The generosity of God is limitless, and it is equal for all of us. And everybody is equally invited to participate in this generosity without end. At times, we so casually live that our faith grow very, very lukewarm. Maybe as a result of familiarity or perhaps some weaknesses which may be natural. But this usually results in some form of drift that only divine grace can actually reset the trajectory we are on. So today, our liturgy exhorts us to seek God when he can still be found. And that is what we read in our first reading. And in our second reading, we are asked to conduct ourselves in ways that are worthy of the calling. So in the Gospel reading, we see that in the encounter, many times the landowner, in his search for workers in his vineyard, which actually symbolizes God, he goes out and finds people idle, and he hires them to work in his vineyard. Now, strange as it appears as the story unfolds, how at the end he pays them equally, four fundamental points are brought to bear. One, the grace of God is given in equality to all. Number two, there is equality in the kingdom of heaven. Number three, there is enough room for everybody in the kingdom of God. And finally, there are no latecomers into the kingdom of heaven. In our call to respond to the grace of God, who actually first loved us, because all we are doing is responding to the love of God. So our faith is actually a response. In such response, we are faced with different situations of cultural, social, economical, and even religious diversities. And that is why not everybody ever gets to profess Christianity explicitly. That means a lot for those of us who are Christians. So we learn from this story that God is exceptionally generous and it is never late in our search for him to turn towards him. As Christians, you and I have a rare privilege to respond explicitly to the salvific invitation of God. However, the question to ask is, how deep is our response to this faith? Faith is not meant to be dormant or even idle. It is actually meant to be active. And each time we are idle, God wants us to be active. Very often when it comes to the life of faith, we sit around idle. It is very easy to simply go through the ritual of having faith or belonging to some religious affiliation. And at the same time, we fail to truly and really embrace the daily routine of building up our relationship with God and with our neighbors. So it is actually easier to possess an idle faith than that faith which is actually active and transformative. And that is the invitation we have today to settle for the letter. In his apostolic exhortation, Porta Fidie, Pope Benedict XVI, explained that the door of faith is always open to all of us and is ushering us into the life of a deep communion with God. So it is possible to actually cross that threshold when the word of God is proclaimed and our hearts allow itself to be open and to be shaped and to be transformed by this grace. And I think that's the number one paragraph of that uh, exhortation. Now, to enjoy the gift of faith in our lives, there is a need for us, a strong ecclesiastical commitment is needed. That commitment in love to the cause of the gospel must be established. It enables each one of us actually to walk in the lost vineyard, to be hired even at the late hour. And only in this dimension actually can our faith truly grow. According to the pontiff, he maintained that faith actually grows when it is lived as an experience of love received and when it is communicated to others as an experience of joy and of the grace we receive from God. And that is number seven of that document. 
So my dear friends, such disposition actually makes us fruitful because it expands our hearts in hope and enables us to bear true life witness with our hearts open and we become true disciples and missionaries for the kingdom of God. So we not only participate, but we bring others along when our hearts are open to receiving the word of God and sharing it with others. And that is the commitment of mission. What Jesus is urging us to do here is that we are all challenged to get to work. Many of us have spent so much of our faith life in idle living. And sometimes we do not know how to change that lifestyle. But here is how. Jesus is saying, get to work. It is not late. Don't say it is late for me. No, it is not. Jesus is telling us that God's mercy and generosity has no limit. And God is never tired. He does not shy away from bestowing his mercy and generosity on his children. No matter how far away from him we have wandered, and no matter what depth of idleness we have fallen into, God wants to pull us out. He wants us to come to his yard. Let us be ready and disposed, therefore, to go and work. We are as welcome as the early comers and, in fact, worth the same value in his sight. That is why, at the end of the parable, everybody was paid equally, in fact, beginning with the late comers. So, my dear friends, reflect on our life today. And let us honestly judge ourselves about the level of activity of our faith, each and every one of us. To find God in response to the demands of our first reading, we must change our ways of life, forsaking evil and seeking mercy. And as the psalmist says to us today, God is near to all who call upon him. So the ball is on our courts. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, if we have been active and productive, we are called to remain committed to that activity. If, however, we are lagging and present ourselves for hire, God is ready to employ us. God is ready to give us equal grace with those who came much, much earlier than us. And that is the message for us today, my dear brothers and sisters. Therefore, let none hear you say, it is too late, there is nothing I can do. No, you can still go and walk for simply one hour. We can talk to a soul. We can convert a brother, maybe through our own conversion. And that is why it is not late. Heaven is so big. There is room for you, brother. There is room for me. And none of us should be jealous of this generosity of God. If our piety is such that others will be put out of heaven, then something is wrong with us. We lack that growth of faith, which is an experience of love that the Pope Pontiff speaks about. And in reality, it is only practicable when it is also reflected, when it also reflects in the life of others to show them this divine charity which we ourselves have experienced. So dear friends, as we enjoy the celebration of this Sunday of our Lord, let us reflect and see how we can change our ways. The Lord still loves you. Never think that you have been forgotten. No, the Lord loves us all. So it is my sincere prayer for us that our hearts will be open and disposed to accepting his words. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do have a wonderful Sunday celebration and a fruitful week ahead. Jesus loves you.